Okay, welcome back. This will be a pre-recording of section 4.3, which is on page 114 in your books. Okay, to call it law five, well, let's be clear, it's law six. Okay, um, for pre concepts uh, that you need to know in advance, is the meaning of the square root of any number a means that the square root of a times the square root of a is equal to a so that basically the square root of a is some number on the number line and then when you multiply that by itself you get a okay they that can be a little bit misleading in that that could be that could also be the other way around depending on whether a is bigger or smaller than 1. For example, if a is a quarter, then the square root of a will be twice as big as it, be a half. If a is bigger than 1, this will be the correct arrangement. Okay, so the root of a is less than a if a is larger than 1, etc. But what about cubed roots? Let's take the cube root of b times the cube root, cube root of b, cube root of b times the cube root of b. It's equal to b. Okay, so if we say, well, b has to be to some, let's represent it as b to some power x. Here's the logic of why b must be one third. Because according to the product rule, this one, okay, which could be written in threefold, a to the p, a to the q, a to the x is equal to a to the p plus q plus x. Then p, b to the 3x is equal to b to the 1. 3x equals 1, x is a third. So there's no two ways about it. If you want cubed root to be represented in exponents, then the fraction must be a third. It's the same for square root. So that's just the way it is. So this is not just by choice, it's by necessity because of logic, okay? Not much more to be said, you learn these by example. So we go in here and they ask what's the square root of 25? What number multiplied by itself twice? Multiplied by itself gives 25. The answer is five by inspection. What's the fifth root of 32? I'm not expecting you to know that. You could know it, but if you don't know it, you'll go 32 to the power of a fifth. It's two. Other ways of putting that into your calculator, 32 to the power of five upside down. And uh, 32 to the power of a fifth, as in point two. Okay, where else do we want to go with this? Well, you can always just key it into the calculator. Square root of 25. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up here. You could key that, yeah, I've done that, okay? Now we're going to do this one. There is a special button for that. So you're best to use it. So you're going to go, as we learned, you're going to have to key in that first and then the thousand. So we have a special direct way of calculating square roots and cubed roots, but not fifth roots. Okay, and that will all verify up there for us nicely. So then you go on to another law. Which is, they call it further fractional indices. We have a quick look at our tables. And it's the next law down, so we call it law seven. So the important thing here, if we're keeping tally, is that this was law six, and now this is law seven. So what's that telling us? Wipe the board. It's telling us that a to the p over q is the 
cute, 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 cute root of A to the P. But this is a mix of old and new language, of old of new, new notation. So there's really telling us you can split them, but that's not the way to go. The way to go most of the time conceptually is take the root first, okay, and then take the power. And if we want to remember that better, we might use one over R for the root, and P for the power. Let's get on with it. Okay, so it's suggesting we take the fifth root of 32, which is 2, then we take it to the power of 4, which is 16. We take the fourth root, and you can write it all notation, of 81, which is 3. Then you take that up to the power of 5, which I think is 320. I'm not sure. Let's see. 3 to the 5. No, it's not. It's not that because. I'm annoyed at myself. I'm very annoyed at myself, but that's okay. Because being annoyed at myself means I've got some sort of expectations. 24, 3. Can I remember what I wrote now? 3, 24, didn't I? 24, 3. Okay, you discover all sorts of things about your brain. That funny little thing, a ball of porridge inside your head. That's you, by reflecting upon your learning. Now I've learned that, okay. Um, first problem here is make it big, bigger. So we found out now what negative powers are. This is the logical consequences We'll go with an index, say six, five, four, three, mm, a bit too far. Let's go four, three, two, one, not negative one, negative two. Let's go with the number, base power two, say, um, and base two, and let's go with the number in in a in index form. And then as a, as as um, well, let you show you what I mean. We've got two to the four is sixteen, two to the three is eight, two to the two is four. If I keep going, two to the one is two, two to the naught has to be one because I'm dividing by two. So all I'm saying we're saying is we're discovering by the pattern one over four. We're discovering by the pattern that it must be true now. So we're we're seeing we're seeing two to the minus two equals one over two to the plus two. Okay. But of course I could replace the twos in here with Q with Qs or Ps or anything. Okay. And that's and they've they've replaced them with A's. It's A to the four. And the pattern continues. Okay, I, I'm tempted to scratch the video because it's getting a bit messy, but I'm going to keep going because um, I never do it. I, I, just to keep up, you should never ever, you, you should generally just say, okay, I'll get better next time and, and push on because procrastination and delaying things and trying to be perfect is, is a damaging, a damaging um, feature to have. So two to negative five is equal to one over two to the plus five. 3 to the negative 6 is equal to 1 over 3 to the plus 6, and 4 to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over 4 to the 2. Okay, here we have to mix the previous two laws that we just learned. You can do it in either order. 
either order. So let's do it using the dealing with the negative bit first. 64 to the minus 4 thirds is equal to 1 over 64 to the 4 thirds. Now we'll deal with the 64 to a third, which is 4. And I'll, I'll, I'll write it here. 64 to the third to the 4, which is equal to 1 over 4 to the 4. Okay. And I need to check what that is. We'll just have a quick peek at 4 to the 4. 1 over 256. But I've only done that one way. What would be doing it to the other? The other way would be dealing with the third first. Actually, on retrospect, it no. On retrospect, it makes sense to deal with the um, to deal with the negative first, and then the third, and then the four. So as you look at it, you deal with that first, and then that, and then that. Okay, let's do the 27 real smart now. I'll just get it into this little tiny scrap of paper that I have here, scrap of space that I have here. So let me take the first, after the first step, it will be one over 27 to the five thirds. After, after the first step, after the second step, it'll be one over three to the five. And that's equal to, was it three to the five I struggled with a minute ago? 24, 3. Yeah. When in doubt, double check. Twenty four three. One over three to the five, twenty-four three. Just come up with extra little reinforcements for yourself. Three to the five ends with three. Next question. Interview. Stretch it out to full size. You won't have that option if you go to full size up here, and I'm not I'm not a fan of the full size up here anymore because it just I can't put the calculator on the screen when we want that. So now what we have is we have a, a power, sorry, a product to a power. A product. To a power. A product AB to a power. First two letters of the alphabet and then to P for power. AB to P. Well, it's AB times AB times AB and on and on and on. times so it'll be a by a by a by a and on and on and on p times or a to the p times b by b by b by b and on and on and on p times or b to the power of p so that's justification i've just proven to you that it's true okay similarly a over b by a over b, by a over b, and on and on and on. Try and do one of these squiggly ones. P times. You multiply all the tops together, p times, and all the bottoms together, p times. So we have those two rules and we're ready to start applying them. So these are actually correct for some reason, really. Eight and nine. He has them numbered correctly for some reason, but the others are not numbered correctly. Oh no. That's the way it is. So we're in 46, is it? 47. And we're way down here in question one here, probably. So there is an example. I know what I did. I started saying I'll put these examples right below the theory as it goes in the book. So what we're going to do here, well, this is a real mess. Yeah, well, 
It's 27 to the two thirds. And this could have been the question you wanted to ask me about because it, because it is a little bit of a, there's a lot going on here. Because if you like, we've gone straight from P here. But we're, we're not, we might expect, we might have expected P to be an integer. But you, but you see, so, but they, they haven't, they've made it, they've made it a, fra a ratio, a rational number, but that's okay. That's okay. So we've just got to apply it as a rational number. Okay, so yes, it's kind of like a lot going on, a lot of juggling. 27 to the power of a third is three, three squared is nine. I'm going to show you something in a second. A oh, thousand to the power of three is ten. Ten squared is ten. And to actually show you that step of two thirds, from the point of view of our lookup table, in two thirds, what you're doing is you're jumping down off a cube, back up to the square. That's taking something to the power of two thirds, or if you like, even though it's to the power of two thirds. It, with the three, you're stepping to the left twice, one less than the number says. And with the two, you're stepping to the right once. So if you had to take to the power of five over seven, you would go this way, and we could do it, seven steps, six steps, and then this way, five steps. Or in other words, you'd step back twice. You would take two away from seven. Like what you're doing here, you take two away from three, and you get one. So basically, when you see 27, you're saying, just go back one step. Okay. So if I took that to the power of five sevens, so you go back two steps to there, to there. Okay. As long as if it's something like, if, if you were asked, what's 16384? Ah. What's 16384 to the power of five sevens? You go if you had this table in front of you, well, that's fine. I'm gonna I hear I found that number, it's in the exact right place because it's the power of a seven, and that's seven. So seven take five is two, boom, boom. The answer is 1024. Okay, you have 256 to the power of five eighths. You go back three places, and the answer would be 32. Or you do it on your calculator, and it won't make any, any bit of difference. Okay, so 27 went back one place to, to nine, one step in, in the powering sequence and a thousand went back one place to 10. And here, you just have to flip this upside down and turn that into two thirds, bring him back one step and bring him back one step. He goes to 100 and he goes to, that one goes to nine and that's the answer. Okay, one, four, just something I want to share with you. I probably could, I, I can be right. I, I tend to keep my hand up off the Surface Pro, but it actually is, is, is programmed to recognize my hand and different to the pen. Anyway, looking at this, I'm just doing this in reverse. I'm getting, I'm, get, I'm going, I'm doing this step, taking square roots. We're getting one, two, three. I'm going to use finding numbers here. So I'll try and tidy up my rect with the writing. We could all appreciate a little bit more tidy writing. Okay, cubing. Well, I know them off by heart, but you, I'm going to make a wild guess. I do, you mightn't yet. Let's use the calculator to calculate a lot of cubes. Okay, into table, bring up a red variable x and cube it. Okay, we'll run it from 1 to 10. On this one, you have to use the joystick, and your one, you just keep hitting equals to toggle through that. 
Okay, and they're the numbers now. I happen to know them. So it's 1, 8, I think I know, 64, 125. Swap the 2 into 1 and everything power 6 ends in 6. So it's a kind of, it has to be. Okay, that's 343. This is 512, which is a power of 2. Of course it is, because it's 2 to the power of 3, which is 8 cubed, which is 2 to the 9. So no surprise. 9 cubed is that 729 cubed I was telling you about it back, back, in, back when we were at school. Okay, and you do that out in reverse, and of course these were the answers here anyway. You do that out in reverse. And you get two, three, four, five. What did I tell you about being neat? Am I being neat? Not sure. Now, hopefully, it says overview, and I didn't need to do that because this was all here and here. Okay. Can you remind me? Every, you know, every time I see overview, it means I shouldn't be writing on it really. Okay. So I hope this is going to be helpful to you. I'll keep going. Not too sure where you got stuck. Let me grab that and drag it. Okay. Let's keep things and laid out nicely. Ten. Six. Four. Three. Four. Eight. Now you can use your calculator for any of these. Sure, we just did it. Two, ten, and six. Okay. Write it as fractions. So the first thing we'd get. First thing we'd get is one over two to the three, and if they want it as a just a fraction, we'd write that. We want practice with them to be able to work as procedurally. See, for me, it's not a procedure. It's become muscle memory. For you, it's a procedure. You need to go to step one. Write it upside down. Step two. And simplify. If it is simplifying, this is nicer for me, but they've asked us to write it as a, it's a fraction. So they mean like this. Okay. So the what we would call the coefficient is going to behave he's going to be pretty much a passenger for a while. Coefficient just the way you would have two x cubed or even two times seven to the x. He's still a coefficient. He's a base, he's an exponent. So we make light work of this now. We go we'll go quickly enough here. There's gonna be two over five cubed equals two over one twenty-five. Now again I go back to the sir, do we you know the question is a great question. Do we need to know these? When you when I go, do you know do you know your powers? Do you know the first block of this table? And I, you can see where it pays off, and I re, I enjoy working with numbers. And you could say, but it's pointless, you'll never need it. But being numerate makes you confident. 
and it does allow you it does it does mean that you can focus on the big picture and the big ideas as they come along and not focus on the nitty gritty part of the calculations okay so you're certainly seeing here the answer is but it is why it's very handy because i can do this really quickly the five stays up the four square goes down that's the first step and the five and the 16 is the second step that's that one though. Okay, the two stays up, the eight goes down in squares, and that's two over 64, which is one over 32 by the time you're finished. Four stays up, two to the four stays down. And by the way, you're not being forced, okay? You're not being forced to write out each step. It's only if you need to. So if you're going to yourself here and you're seeing four over 16, then you can go, that's one over four, okay? From time to time I'll skip steps just to let you know that it's okay to skip steps. Now I'm going to put the 5 into the 10 twice, 1 over 200. You can see there's going to be cancellation here because the three and the six have the same, have something in common. Nothing in common, finish there. Nothing in common. That is. Not coming. Do you need this as well? No, that's what I've just done. I'm just being repeated because I have a clean version. Okay, I've finished the video. I hope that got you through what you needed. I know you asked me to in class. Uh, uh, I, I, I feel guilty because of my, my volume down. I heard it later on. Well, I think I think that answers. I hope that answers because it, it, it covers everything from that section. Thank you. See you next time.